Hi there everyone, I'm Mark Stutman from Folkway Music. I hope you're all doing well out there. I'm going to talk a little bit today about a 1959 Les Paul Special that's in the shop right now. Um, it's on our website if you want to check it out. There's not too many 1959 specials on our website, so it should be easy enough to find. Here it is. It's a special. Double cutaway special from 1959. Gibson uh, changed their single cutaway into a double cutaway model. Uh, sometime in mid-late 58. They didn't ship really until 59. And so we see double cuts from 1959 and 60 uh, into 61 when they switch to the SG body that we're familiar with. There's not too many of this version of Les Paul Special around in the, in the yellow finished double cutaway to pick up with Les Paul on the headstock. Um, there's maybe 1,000 or 1,200 of them estimated. Uh, anyways, this is one of them, and it's in fabulous condition. It's, it's a local guitar. It's largely a one-owner instrument uh, throughout its life. It was bought in 1961 and uh, sold to us by the, the fellow who bought it then. And it has the five-latch Les Paul case, which is another rare feature. Anyways, this guitar came to us in exceptional condition. It's entirely original, untouched. Uh, electronics have never been messed with. Pickups have never been messed with. The frets are original, and barely worn, the nuts never been out, the tuners are original, it's fabulous. And it has an issue that nearly every single double cut two pickup Les Paul Special has. Uh, and it's, it's basically a design flaw in the model that Gibson um, uh, fixed for the 1960 model year. Basically when they went to the double cutaway uh, and the 22 fret neck joint, Gibson kept their neck P90 where it had always been on a, on a single cut guitar. But the problem that that created is that the neck joint, which goes into here, is essentially routed out completely, almost completely, for the uh, cavity that this neck P90 pickup sits in. And there's a very, very small amount of mahogany that is between the end of the fingerboard and the body. Um, and so there's a very weak area right here in the neck joint. A lot of these guitars develop real issues where uh, the neck can crack right in half and fall into the body or the whole sides collapse. Uh, and I suspect that, oh man, maybe 90-95% of these guitars have some kind of an issue going on at the end of the fingerboard at the body joint um, that, that people who own these guitars may or may not even be aware of. I think it's, it's a phenomenally common thing to find on these instruments, and it's a design flaw that Gibson corrected a year later by moving this neck pickup down uh, to leave more mahogany um, just beyond the fingerboard extension to strengthen that neck joint. They had to change the pick guard design too and extend it uh, to fill that, that gap. But on these early ones, you can see there's actually just this little tiny piece of plastic right there um, with two little nails in it. There's a nail there. And a nail there that hold this little piece of plastic on. I'm going to uh, I'm going to pause this video for a quick second here, and I'm going to take the strings off and the pick guard off, and I'm going to show you what's going on under the hood. So, be right back. I am back. Here is the guitar with the pick guard removed. You can see the depth of the neck pickup route, and how close it is to the end of the fingerboard. This quarter of inch of mahogany right here. Uh, on a guitar that has never even had string tension, you can imagine that if you route away this much of the neck joint, the neck tenon, and only this much of the, of the original mahogany is left to support the neck, you can imagine how much flex there's going to be across this small area, um, and why these guitars have this issue of cracking here and here. Um, the nice thing about this design, <laughs> Gibson wasn't thinking about this, but this little piece of, this little area of mahogany was covered with this small piece of pickguard that's held in place by these little small nails, if it will go in focus. Um, the nails are roughly 35 thousandths of an inch wide, and the nail hole is about an eighth of an inch inside where that crack happens. So. That nail hole affords an excellent opportunity to fix this crack properly and permanently. Uh, and the way that I've done it on this one 
was I, I took a, a, a tiny, what's called a pin vise, is basically a handheld little drill, um, and, uh, and a bit that was the same diameter as these nails, about 35 thousandths, and drilled holes using that as a guide, the, the top of that nail hole as a guide, I drilled holes diagonally down to the base of uh, that nail, uh, to the base of the crack on both, on both sides, even though there was no crack on this side, on this side I drilled all the way down to the base of that crack. Then I mixed up some uh, 24 hour cure thin epoxy that was the exact same color as this. And uh, heating it up and heating the area, I then injected that epoxy with pressure into, through that hole, into the base of that crack. And I watched as the epoxy percolated out of the crack from everywhere along its length and the top. I did the same on both sides. I wiggled the neck around to make sure the epoxy was all the way in and saturating the mahogany all around it. And then, once I was sure that it was well saturated, everywhere along that crack was full of epoxy, I set the guitar down this way to have gravity keep the neck angle where I wanted it to be. And I let it sit. It's 24 hour cure product it's best to leave it sit for about three days before you do anything with it if you want maximum strength. So that's what I did. I let it sit for, for three days and then I came back. And now you can, it's hard to see, but you can see in there, in this area, you, can, you can't see that anything really happened, right? The epoxy that I used was the same color as the finish that's already in there. And basically all evidence of that crack is eliminated. If you look closely and you know what you're looking for, yes, you can see it there, but it's very much not there anymore. Um, and the best part about it is that because the epoxy is much stronger than the mahogany that it's uh, bonded to, this area is now stronger than it would have been before the repair, before even a break. The epoxy saturated the mahogany and this wood is now a much stiffer sort of area than it was previously. And so you can play this guitar with all your might and you can bend it and move it and force it and do whatever you want. It's not going anywhere. It's as solid as solid as can be, which takes this gorgeous Les Paul special that's otherwise in near mint condition and makes it truly a good guitar. Because really what's the point of a near mint condition guitar if it has a neck problem that renders it unplayable? This problem is no longer here, and there's no, there's been no finish modification, there's been no finish added, no finish subtracted, N really no evidence that I was there at all, except for uh, maybe if you look really closely, you can actually see uh, the lines left uh, by that crack. Gen genuinely, it's really hard to see, to be honest with you. Anyways, I thought that it was a great fix. It worked out really well. It wasn't a huge labor um, a huge investment in labor. It didn't take very long, and uh, and I'm really happy with the results. So I thought that this was something worth sharing with the repair world at large for pe for people that own these guitars. Um, it's a good trick. Uh, I wouldn't trust yellow glue or high glue or anything like that to this job. I wanted epoxy for its permanent its permanent bond and its its strength. Uh, there's no reason to use anything other than epoxy because there is no time ever that you're going to want to undo this repair. So, uh, anyways, that's, uh, that's the repair. That's the Les Paul Special. And um, if you're local, come on by and try this guitar. It's pretty incredible. If you're not local, well, check it out on our website. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Take care.